the secret of feeling or the calling of the invisible into visible states is beautifully told in the story of Isaac. I'm going to break down the story of Isaac from Genesis in this video today and I have an exercise for you at the end of this video that's going to assist you in using this concept what the Bible was trying to tell us from this story and how to create and manifest anything we want into our lives was described in this story so I'm gonna break this down and give you an exercise a practical simple exercise how you can use this technique to create anything that you want in your life so let's go ahead and get started this is the secret of Feeling. The secret of feeling or the calling of the invisible into visible states is beautifully told in the story of Isaac blessing his second son, Jacob, by the belief based solely upon feeling that he was blessing his first son, Esau. Genesis 27, 1 through 35. All right, so it is recorded that Isaac, who was old and blind, felt that he was about to leave this world and wishing to bless his first son, Esau, before he died. He sent Esau hunting for savory venison with the promise that upon his return from the hunt, he would receive his father's blessing. Now, Jacob, who desired the birthright or right to be born through the blessing of his father, overheard his blind father's request for venison and his promise to Esau. So as Esau went hunting for the venison, Jacob killed and dressed a kid of his father's flock. Okay, so placing the skins upon his smooth body to give him the feel of of his hairy and rough brother Esau. He brought the tastily prepared kid to his blind father's Isaac. And Isaac, who depended solely upon his sense of feel, mistook his second son, Jacob, for his first son Esau, and pronounced his blessing on Jacob. Esau, on his return from the hunt, learned that his smooth-skinned brother Jacob had supplanted him, so he appealed to his father for justice. Okay, guys, so here it is. Simple human decency should tell man, or should tell us, that this story cannot be taken literally. I mean, it's very, very obvious. There must be a message for man hidden somewhere in this treacherous and despicable act of Jacob. The hidden message, the formula of success buried in this story was intuitively revealed to the writer in this manner. Okay, so Isaac, the blind father, is your consciousness, your awareness of being. Esau, the hairy son, is your present objectified world. The rough or sensibly felt, the present moment, the present environment, your present conception of yourself. In short, the world you know by reason of your objective senses. The, in short, the world you know by your reason of your objective senses. Jacob, the smooth-skinned lad or boy, the second son, is your desire or your subjective state, an idea not yet embodied, a subjective state which is perceived and sensed but not objectively known or seen yet. A point in time and space removed from the present. In short, Jacob is your, your defined objective, okay? Jacob is your defined objective. The smooth-skinned Jacob, okay? Or subjective state seeking embodiment or the right of birth. He's seeking his right of birth, okay? His, his seeking embodiment or the right of birth when properly felt or blessed by his father when consciously felt and fixed as real, becomes objectified. And in so doing, he supplants the rough, hairy Esau or the former objectified self or state, which he, which he tricks Isaac into believing. All right, so two things can occupy a given place at one time, okay? So you have to, in order to change your concept of self, you have to create a new concept of self and drive out the old concept of self. Just like, and so the invisible is made visible. The former visible state vanishes once a new version comes in, okay? Your consciousness is the cause of your world. The conscious state in which you abide determines the kind of world in which you live. Your present concept of, of yourself is now objectified as your environment. And this state is symbolized as Esau. So your current state, your current conception of self or your current state of being is Esau. Jacob is your desired result. It's that $3 million or whatever you desire to be, do, or have. That is 
Jacob. And Jacob is trying to convince Isaac that he is now Esau. Okay, so I'm going to break this down. I got the exercise coming up right now, guys. I'm going to break this down even more. So, and this state is, is Esau. That's your current state. The Harry of sensibly felt the first son, that which you would like to be or possess is symbolized as your second son, Jacob. So the thing that you want is Jacob, the smooth-skinned lad who is not yet seen, but is subjectively felt and will, if properly touched, supplant his brother Esau or your present world always bear in mind that the fact that isaac the father of these two sons or states is blind isaac is, is they're kind of like giving you hints here even though it's symbolic these are hints for the subconscious mind okay isaac feels only he only he cannot see he only feels just like a subconscious mind only knows what you tell it through your feelings it can't see any his senses don't work the same only feeling it reacts from your feelings it's impersonal from your feelings Always bear in mind that Isaac, the father of these two sons or states, is blind. He does not see his smooth-skinned son, Jacob. He only feels him. Okay, all these hints are being dropped here. It's, it's obvious. And through the sense of feeling, he actually believes Jacob, the subjective, to be Esau, the real, the objectified. Okay? You do not see your desire objectively. You simply sense it or feel it subjectively. You do not grope in space after a desirable state. Like Isaac, you sit you sit still and send your first son hunting by removing your attention from your objective world. Then, in the absence of your first son, Esau, you invite the desirable state, your second son, Jacob, to come close so that you may feel it. Come close, my son, that I may feel you. Chapter 27, verse 21. First, you are aware of it in your immediate environment. Then you draw it closer and closer and closer until you sense it and feel it in your immediate presence so that it is real and natural to you. If two of you shall agree on earth as touching on any point that they, that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Matthew eighteen nineteen. The two agree through the sense of feel and the agreement is established on earth, is objectified, is made real. The two agreeing are Isaac and Jacob. You and that which you desire and the agreement is made solely on the sense of feeling. Feeling is the secret, guys. Okay, so Esau symbolizes your present objectified world, whether it, it be pleasant or otherwise. Jacob symbolizes any and every desire of your heart. Isaac symbolizes your true self with your eyes closed to the present world. Okay, so in the act of sensing and feeling yourself to be or to, to possess that which you desire to be or to possess, the secret of Isaac, the sensing, feeling state is simply the act of mentally separating the sensibly felt, which is your present physical state from the insensible felt that which you would like to be. Okay, so with the objective senses tightly shut, Isaac made and you can make the insensibly felt the subjective state seem real or sensibly known for faith is knowledge. Knowing the law of self-expression, the law by which the invisible is made visible, is not enough. It must be applied, and this is the method of application. First, send your first son, Esau, your present objectified world or problem hunting. Okay, so this is accomplished simply by closing your eyes in meditation and taking your attention away from the objective, objectified limitations. As your senses are removed from your objective world, it vanishes from consciousness or goes hunting. Okay, so second, with your eyes still closed and your attention removed from the world round about you, consciously fix the natural time and place for the realization of your desire. With your objective senses closed to your present environment, you can sense and feel the reality of any point in time or space for both are psychological and can be created at will. It is vitally important that the natural time-space condition of Jacob, that is the natural time and place for the realization of your desire, be first fixed in your consciousness. If Sunday is the day on which the thing is desired to be realized, then Sunday must be fixed in consciousness now. So you make Sunday now. If today was Wednesday and you're trying to create something for Sunday, you have to make Sunday 
now. So it's no longer Wednesday. You're actually in Sunday. You're making. You're not going to Sunday. You're bringing Sunday to you. Simply begin to feel that it is Sunday until the quietness and naturalness of Sunday is consciously established. You have definite associations with the days, weeks, months, and seasons of the year. This is actually a really good example here. You have said time and time again, today feels like Sunday or Monday or Saturday, or this feels like spring or summer or fall or winter. This should convince you that you have definite conscious impressions that you associate with the days, weeks, and seasons of the year. Then, because of these associations, you can select any desirable time and be, and by recalling the conscious impression associated with such time, you can make a subjective reality of that time right now because you're familiar with, you have a conscious impression of that time, those specific times of the year or spring, Christmas, you know, certain holidays, it feels like it's this day, it feels like it's spring or it feels like it's Saturday or doesn't it feel like it's Wednesday? You know, certain things like, so you have that impression within you so you can create that feeling. Do the same with space. If the room in which you are seated is not the room in which the thing desired would be naturally placed or realized, feel yourself seated in the room or place where it would be natural. Consciously fix this time space impression before you start the act of sensing and feeling the nearness, the reality, and the possession of the thing desired. It matters not whether the place desired be 10,000 miles away or next door. You must fix it in consciousness. The fact that right where you are seated is the desired place. You do not make a mental journey. You collapse space you do not make a mental journey. You collapse space. Sit quietly where you are where you are, and make thereness into hereness. That's a very good one. Thereness, make thereness into hereness. Close your eyes and feel that the very place where you are is the place desired. Feel and sense the reality of it until you are consciously impressed with this fact. For your knowledge of this fact is based solely on your subjective sensing subjective sensing third in the absence of esau the problem and with the natural time space established you invite jacob the solution to come and fill this space to come and supplant his brother in your imagination see the thing desired if you cannot visualize it sense the general outline of it so this is good for the people out there that don't know how to visualize you say you can't visualize or you don't have enough practice something like that don't, if you have a problem visualizing, just sense the general outline of it. Contemplate it. Then mentally draw it close to you. Come close, my son, that I may feel you. It's like the Bible said. Come close, my son, that I may feel you. Feel the nearness of it. Feel it to be in your immediate presence. Feel the reality and solidity of it. Feel it and see it naturally placed in the room in which you are seated right now. Feel the thrill of actual accomplishment, the relief, and the joy of possession. Now open your eyes. This brings you back to the objective world, the rough or sensibly felt world. Your hairy son Esau has returned from the hunt and by his very presence tells you that you have been betrayed by your smooth-skinned son Jacob, the subjective, psychologically felt, but like Isaac, whose confidence was based upon the knowledge of this changeless law, you too will say, I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants. That is even th though your problems appear fixed and real, you have felt the subjective psychological state to be real to the point of receiving the thrill of that reality. You have experienced the secret of creation. You have felt the reality of the subjective. You have fixed a definite psychological state, which in spite of all opposition or precedent, will objectify itself, thereby fulfilling the name of Jacob, the supplanter. Here are a few practical examples of this drama. Exercise first. The blessing or making a thing real. Sit in your living room and name a piece of furniture, rug, or lamp that you would like to have in this particular room. Look at that area of the room where you would place it if you had it. Close your eyes and let all that now occupies that area of the room vanish. In your imagination, see this area as empty space. There is nothing there. Now begin to fill this space with the desired piece of furniture sense and feel that you have it in this 
in this very area. Imagine you are seeing that which you desire to see. Continue in this consciousness until you feel the thrill of possession. Second, the blessing or the making of a place real. Not a thing now. We did the thing real. Now this is a place. You are seated in your New York apartment contemplating the joy that would be yours if you were on an ocean liner sailing across the great Atlantic. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there, ye may be also John 14 to three. Your eyes are closed. You have consciously released the New York apartment and in its place, you sense and feel that you are on an ocean liner. You are seated in a deck chair and there is nothing round about you, but the vast Atlantic fix the reality of this ship and ocean so that in this state, you can mentally recall the day you were seated in your New York apartment, dreaming of this day at sea. Recall the mental picture of yourself seated there in the New York dreaming of this day. In your imagination, see the memory picture of yourself back there in your New York apartment. If you succeed in looking back on your New York apartment without consciously returning there, then you have successfully prepared the reality of this voyage. You have activated the positron, which um, Richard Feynman won the Nobel Prize on, which is actually related to this, which is the positron. It's a positive running electron. Okay, so remain in this consciousness state, feeling the reality of the ship and the ocean. Feel the joy of this accomplishment. Then open your eyes. You have gone and prepared the place. You have fixed a definite psychological state. And where you are in consciousness, there you shall be in body also. Third, the blessing or making real of a point in time. You consciously let go of this day, month or year, as the case may be, and you imagine that it is now that day, month or year which you desire to experience. You sense and feel the reality of the desired time by impressing upon yourself the fact that it is now accomplished and you sense the naturalness of this time. You begin to feel the thrill of having fully realized that which before you started the psychological journey in time you desire to experience at this time. With the knowledge of your power to bless, you can open the doors of any prison, the prison of illness or poverty or a, hum a humdrum existence. And just like it was stated in the Bible, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Isaiah 61, 1, Luke 4, 18. All right, guys, so I'm going to break this down real quick for you again. Okay, so Isaac, the story of Isaac broken down from its symbolic nature written from the Bible. Isaac, the blind father, is your consciousness, your awareness of being it can also be translated to be the subconscious mind which it can't see it can't sense anything and only it only knows what you tell it through your feelings so an esau the hairy son is your present objectified world esau the hairy son is your present objectified world the rough or sensibly felt the present moment the present environment your present conception of self Okay, so then we have the second son, which is Jacob, the smooth skinned lad. The second son is your desire or subjective state, an idea not yet embodied. So Jacob is whatever you want, your desire, whatever you're trying to do, be, or have is Jacob replaced, replacing your current state, which is Esau. And then you convince Isaac to believe through feeling that that is you and then it will be manifested into your world. All right, guys, I love you guys very much. And don't forget to give me one thing you guys are grateful for. And I'm going to keep on breaking these down for you. This is out of Neville Goddard's Freedom for All with some of my own notes and my some of my own interpretations. But I'm going to keep breaking these down for you guys. Love you guys very much and leave a comment with anything you want me to clarify and I will do that. All I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more.